All right now, Miss Rogers. Just a little higher with your knee, Miss Rogers. Like this? When everything's upside down. Sure, you got her standing on her head. Uh, you see, that's the way the picture looks through the camera. It's for focusing and composition. Oh, right. Come on, Charlie, we can't keep Miss Rogers like this all day. Be all right with me. All right now, Miss Rogers. That same smile, appealing. Sure. That's it. Is that all now? That'll be all, thank you. <laughs> you look lovely, Helen. Let me introduce Mr. Stoner, president of the Stoner Hotels. How do you do, Mr. Stoner? Well, uh, if you'll excuse me, I'll take off your stockings and your undies. Oh. You mean your stockings? Well, I am tempted. They're beautiful. Oh, but I'm afraid they're too expensive for... Nonsense. <laughs> Mr. Stoner insists. Don't you, Mr. Stoner? Certainly. Keep them, Miss Rogers. Oh, but aren't they supposed to be returned to the company? Miss Rogers, in the advertising business, you don't expect anything back. <laughs> well, I'll run along and change. <laughs> oh. Goodbye, Mr. Stoner. Goodbye, Miss Rogers. The girl with a million dollar legs. What an idea. What pictures. What copy. What a campaign. Why, that model and Phillips drawings can sell us a million dollars worth of hosiery. Go to it. Put it over big. Say, I'll get over to the station and meet Bertie. Well, see you at the hotel. All right, goodbye. <laughs> Stoner. Helen, as a model in the advertising business, you can make more in a week than you can in a year as a hotel stenographer. What's the catch? Now, don't get me wrong. Forget this stenographer business and string along with me. You have a reputation for stringing along with the ladies, haven't you? Oh, you know how people talk. I'm just as anxious to get away from last year's clothes and dime lunches as the next girl. What do you mean? Well, Mr. Reynolds, there are no strings on my job at the hotel. I'm a stenographer. And that's all. Well, that's smart. Isn't going to stop us from being friends, is it? Not at all. Good. Let's go to lunch. All right. But I have to report at the hotel first. <laughs> well, how's the face on the magazine cover? I'll tell you better after we've seen the pictures. <laughs> hey, any new business today? A guy dictated to me for over an hour and then put me on the cuff. When I finished, he wanted to borrow a stamp to mail it. I'm going to lunch with Mr. Reynolds. Okay, I'll keep the door open. How'd Helen photograph Mr. Reynolds? Like a million. I've named her the girl with the million dollar legs. Hmm, what's the matter with the face? This was for a silk stocking ad. Oh, I see, one of those French art studies. The old boy buys socks for the old lady and prays she'll look like Helen. You got the idea. <laughs> but not the figure. <laughs> Hello there. Hello. How about lunch, Helen? I'll be off duty in a half hour. We might make that spaghetti place. Well, I, I'm sorry, but I just told Mr. Reynolds I'd have lunch with him. Oh, I see. Well, have a good time. Here we go, Helen. All right. See you later. <laughs> Get used to it, kid. She's designed for the big time. Wonder what she sees in that guy. Ah, you guys are all alike. He's got social position, money, a big job. What more could you ask? Yeah, and he's a chaser. He's cold turkey, that boy. Drop your rattle and grow up. Helen's got a chance to make some money posing, and if he's playing her, that's a game two can play, and I'm betting on Helen. Posing in stockings so that everyone can look at her. Well, I bet you cut out one for the album. Does wife be because Helen might make a living? No, but she ought to get married. Yeah, pose for nothing. Oh, now, come on, Jim. Forget it. You can't blame a girl with everything for wanting to set it off, now, can you? No, I suppose not. Helen likes you, honest. But when it comes to bells, the only one she can hear is in Philadelphia, and that's cracked. Well, wedding bells would make her a lot happier. Yeah, but the Liberty Bell means independence. Mr. Morgan, are you on duty here as a clerk or a stenographer? I, uh, I just stopped here for a minute. Well, there are guests wanting service. Yes, sir. Mr. Morgan, meet Mr. Scala. 
How are you, Mr. Scala? Oh, I'm feeling fine. Mr. Scala is the manager of Joe One Bell, um... Dumbbell? No! On the bell! Raleigh, come here. Met Mr. Morgan. How are you, Mr. Raleigh? That All is right. Mr. Franklin. How are you? There you are, gentlemen. Hex champion of the world. Mr. Scala wants a room for himself and Mr. Riley. Sign here, Mr. Scala. Will the third floor be all right? No. Streetcar bells to keep him away. Higher up. Eat to the bell! Eat to the bell! Eat to the bell! That's so! That's so! That's so! Mr. Frank, I am sorry. The champions go crazy when they hit the bell. You see red, he acts too quickly. You never hit the bell with the champ. He's so sorry. Uh, Mr. Scala, take the champ to his room. Yes, sir. Come on, champ. Are you all right, Mr. Franklin? Yes, sir. Hello, bright eyes. If the glare is bothering you, pull down your blinds. Oh, snappy, eh? Well, that's the way I like them. Hmm. I'm all a Twitter. Say, my name's Phillips. You can call me Phil. Thanks, Henry. What's your racket? Well, I'm in stocks and bonds. Oh, one of the bulls. <laughs> Say, how'd you like to write a little note for me? That's the one way you and I can do business. Who's the two? Address it to John Doe. Dear John, I'm dictating to one of the cutest girls I've ever met. And? And when I finish, I'm going to ask her to have lunch with me. What do you think of my chances? Not a chance. And the charge is 75 cents. Can't you take a joke? I took you for 75 cents, didn't I? Not yet. But soon. Oh, Mr. Kelly. Hello, Larry. Meet Mr. Phillips. May be a relative of yours. He's one of the bulls from Wall Street. Uh, Mr. Kelly is our house detective. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Phillips. How much extra for the wisecracks? I give them away. I want to retain my amateur standing. Thanks. I want you to meet Mrs. Stoner. How do you do, Mrs. Stoner? So nice to have you with us. I trust you'll enjoy your stay in Los Angeles? Uh, Mr. Stoner, our manager, Mr. Franklin. How do you do, Mr. Stoner? I trust you had a nice trip. I hope this is a decent hotel. We have the very best accommodations in town. Oh, I don't mean that. I mean the people in it. I don't approve of hotels. They cater to a very loose element. I told you you should have stayed at home. And let you run around the country loose? <laughs> Who else is on the third floor? Why, uh, let me see. There are Mr. and Mrs. Jordan, Elderly gentleman and his wife, and uh, Miss Agatha Gillicuddy. A single girl. An old maid. Where's Reynolds? Oh, he's on your floor, too. Is his wife here? My dear, I told you Reynolds' wife is away on a trip. Why is he stopping at a hotel? He's having his home redecorated. <laughs> I'm sure, Mrs. Stoner, you like our home. You see, I came down to do business with Reynolds' advertising firm. And I don't want her to know anything about the little trouble he had at his house. You see, uh, Bertie wouldn't understand. She's a little suspicious and uh, jealous. I understand, Mr. Stoner. Thank you. Martin, are you coming? Yes, dear. Coming. That's a swell number. It's my favorite song. That's our song, Helen. You remember when we first heard it? Uh-huh. You... You said that night that you loved me. I know. You haven't changed your mind. Well, love is something that... that's hard to be sure of, Jim. Well, I'm sure that I love you.
that's what makes it so difficult. Is, is it someone else? No, it, it's just that we're not kids anymore. Say, am I a kid just because I'm in love with you? Oh, I don't mean that. Look, Jim, we've grown up. It's serious with us now. Well, what's wrong with that? Will you wait till I finish? The next thing we do is get married, isn't it? You can find time to make up your mind. It sounds swell. All you have to do is let yourself go and slide right into it. Well, why not try it? Because I don't want to wake up afterwards. I think I could keep you dreaming for a while. You can't dream when the bill collectors are pounding on the door, Jim. My mother and dad started out with the same idea. They were still at it, struggling at 60, while my mother was worn out from scrubbing her own floors and trying to keep us kids decently clothed and fed on nothing a week. Well, I'm sorry, Helen. But that doesn't say that you and I... But there's my kid sister, just going to have another baby. Why, the hospital and doctor bills for the first one aren't paid yet. You haven't much confidence in me, have you? I'm making enough for us to get by. I don't intend to be behind a hotel desk all my life. Why, one of my stories are bound to sell Oh, food. listen. They found a man the other day who wasn't trying to write for pictures. They put him in a museum. Suppose that everyone thought the way that you do. But I'm not supposing, and I'm not everyone. Oh, forget it, honey. You won't admit it, but you do love me. No, Jim. This love in a cottage thing is out. It may sound selfish, but I've promised myself that I'm not going to spend the rest of my life worrying about the rent and the butcher and the baker and whether I can buy a new spring suit or a new pair of stockings. You get plenty of men to buy your stockings. You keep on posing in them. I wouldn't say any more if I were you, Jim. I'm sorry, Helen. I didn't mean it that way. Well, how do you like it? It's great. I never knew our stockings looked so nice. Ah, maybe you never saw them so well filled before. <laughs> now, here's the one we're going to give away by the thousands before we spring the air. The public will be more than familiar with the best looking legs in the country. Then we can tell them that Stoner can make them all look like a million. I'll send letters to all of our agencies at once. I'll have to have a stenographer for this. Say, I'll take these back to the office and see you later. Here, here's the other. No, 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 you keep that. That's the original. Hello, will you send up a stenographer? Come in. Do you want someone? Why, uh, Mr. Stoner sent for me. I'm a stenographer. Yes, I can see that. Mr. Stoner will not need you today. Oh, so it's you. Oh, were you expecting someone else? I never knew you to not before. Maybe I tried to act like your other girlfriends. What do you mean? I mean, Martin Stoner, that you can't pull the wool over my eyes. <laughs> Too bad I returned so quickly. Will you explain yourself before you have a stroke? You know what I'm talking about. Your stenographer friend will not be here today. Friend? Yes, she was coming in as I came up. Oh, that was the stenographer I phoned for. Look here, what did you tell her? I told her you wouldn't need her. Oh, of all the silly... Now, look here, you're going too far. I phoned downstairs for a stenographer to do some work for me. I've never seen the girl. Now, your insane jealousy will make a fool out of me. Well, you didn't have to invite her to your room while I was away. Oh, rats! You've never seen her? No. Well, how did you get her picture, then? That's an ad I'm using. Since when do you use stenographers in your ads? Oh, now, look here, Bertie. I am looking, and my eyes are wide open. Love from the girl with the million-dollar legs. That picture is for an ad. It's going in all the magazines. It's going in evidence, too. In a divorce suit. In a... In a...
Top of the morning to you, darling. Hello, Laura. Well, what's the matter? Has the old brain broken down? The old brain's working overtime. Laura, in some way, I'm going to cash in on all this. Such as? Well, I don't know yet, but... All right, sir. I'll be right up. Hold the fort, honey. I'm going upstairs to take some letters from that Detroit buyer. Okay. Hello, Helen. Got a little present for you. Hmm, how many copies? Oh, I think one of those will be enough. Listen, Smarty, this isn't for me. My name's Jones, Laura Jones. Oh, yeah? Let's see your driver's license. What makes you think I've got one? A lot of things happen. Hmm. Okay, baby. Seeing you around sometime. Don't make it too soon. Can you direct me to Miss Helen Rogers? Why, uh... Why, yes. Is she taking dictation on the third floor? Thanks. Stoner's on that floor, too. Give me the desk. It's for you, Jim. Hey, what's the idea? We wanted Helen, and you signaled me to send him upstairs, didn't you? No, you kangaroo. I said Helen was upstairs. That guy's got a summons for him, the stolen divorce case. I'll take care of him. Kelly, come here. Yeah, Jim, what is it? There's a man acting very suspiciously. He's a cocky little guy with a blue suit and a black derby hat. I think he's on the third floor. Thanks, I'll get him. You're Mr. Martin Stoner, are you not? Yes, what is it? The people of the state of California send greetings. Ah, oh, Jim, you're just jealous. Helen, I'm sorry about this Stoner affair. You can save your sympathy, Jim. But gee, I hate to have people talking about you, printing lies about you, and all this notoriety. As long as they spell my name right, I don't care. Don't you see it's what I want? It'll give me my break. Well, I've had an offer already. Vaudeville. But I'm going to wait for something better. That's the reckless way to play, dear. That's what you think. Why don't you face this thing and prove that you didn't have anything to do with Stoner? All in its time, kind sir, but not till I get plenty of press notices. Hello, Miss Rogers. How about another little picture for the Times? Oh, certainly. What would you like me to do? Well, right up here on the desk will be fine. Oh, nice. Now, don't forget this good old appeal. Remember, you're the girl with the million dollar lakes. There, that's fine. Now, how about another? Oh, I'm glad to. Right now, there. see here. I tell you, I won't have this in the paper. You're not going to do this to me. No, no, no Mr. Stoner. Uh, Gee, that's a pit tent. Come on, let's beat it. Beat here, it. you, you. Are you Helen Rogers? Well, I... Uh, <laughs> no, 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 oh, no, 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 I help along all I can. Now you're talking like yourself. I'm going up to the office. I'll be right back. Do you suppose I could take a couple of hours off? They called up from the Colonial Broadcasting about an audition. Sure, I'll speak to Mr. Franklin. Oh, thanks, Jim. I'll hurry back. How are you, Mr. Blatt? Oh, how do you do? Is Mr. Goldberg in? Tell Mr. Goldberg that Mr. Blatt's at the Apex Picture Corporation is calling. Thank you. By the way, who is that young lady? Her face looks very familiar. Oh, you've probably seen her picture in the papers. She's had a lot of publicity lately. Oh, yes. The girl with the million dollar legs. That's right. How's business, Mr. Blatt? Not so good. You see, we've got to compete with monkey cereals, and now it's bank nights. Something new all the time they want. Exploited names we got to have. 
I'm trying out now a box fighter. Huh, mister, that's a business. <laughs> I guess it's a lot tougher than it looks. Send Mr. Blatt's right up. Go right up, Mr. Blatt. Thank you. Hey, bottom it. They'll think we have a statue here. Say, take the desk for me a minute, will you? I tell you, we can sell these pictures. Well, what's the matter with them? They've been all right for 20 years. Ah, that's the trouble. We got to have something big. Maybe we should start an elephant. Excuse me, Mr. Goldberg. Can I speak with you and Mr. Blatt a moment? Sure, Jim. Come on in. I got very important business with Mr. Goldberg. You wouldn't be long. No, just a minute. Mr. Blatt, when you were at the desk, you said you needed a new idea. I've got it. Not an elephant cereal. No, a bigger one, a hot one, an advertised from coast to coast, sex appeal, front page copy, something everyone will want to see. We'll pay their quarters, lead their firesides and radios. It won't cost you much to try, and you might make a million. <laughs> wait a minute, Sal, wait a minute. This boy is no dumber. Uh, Go on, Jim, what is it? Sir? There, take a look at this. The girl with the million dollar legs. How is that to exploit? Your publicity bill's half paid. She's got looks, and she can sing. Yes, but can she act? She can act as good as some of the stars I've seen. Maybe better. Make a test of her. Golly, he's right, Sal. Didn't I tell you he was smart? And right from in front of our noses. Listen, Jim. You want to sell the contract? What contract? <laughs> you see, he asked me about contract. <laughs> we'll give her a good contract. A fair price on the first picture. All wardrobe. Feature billing. Option for five years and a good commission for you. Jim, how can you make more out of it? Gentlemen, wait a minute. I don't want to make anything out of this. I've got no contract. I'm just giving you the idea. You haven't mentioned this to principal. You haven't told Harry Conk about the idea. No, Mr. Blatt. If you like, I'll send Miss Rogers over to see you tomorrow. But one thing you must do. Sure, Jim, but don't be unreasonable. What is it? You've got to promise me that you won't let Miss Rogers know that I had anything to do with this. Why should we say anything? And you, Mr. Goldberg? Certainly. I wouldn't mention it to a soul. But why do we have to wait till tomorrow? Right now, I'll call up a good agent. He'll come over with a contract. We'll go to Helen Rogers' house, and it'll be all over with the screaming. Shouting, you mean? What's the difference? I'll call up Zipper Marks. He should come right over. We don't have to go out. She's right downstairs in the hotel. Well, come on, Carl. What's the use of waiting? I'll meet you down in the dining room. Fifteen minutes a week, Miss Rogers, for five weeks. But, but, but Hart's Rob's will give you $1,500 for a confession. Well, we'll top any price if any broadcast company will offer. And you don't even have to write it. And we'll, I'll do better than that. Just give us your okay. And you will have the greatest confession ever written. Oh, our public... Gentlemen, It's all please. off, boys. It's all off. Miss Rogers is signing with Apex for six feet. I am Carl Blatt's president of Apex. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Blatt? And we are offering you a starting contract for six features. Oh. Well, uh, I'd be very foolish not to accept. Oh, you like Apex. It's the finest studio, and we've got the finest looking leading men in all Hollywood. <laughs> and now how about some lunch while we are waiting for Zipper Box, the agent, to draw up the contract? Well, uh... If you'll excuse me just a minute, I'll, I'll meet you in the dining room. All right. Thank you. Jim, have you heard the news? I'm leaving. I'm on my way up. Zipper Marks is sending me in at Apex for six pictures. That's swell, Helen. Give my regards to Garbo. Oh, because I'm getting a break, you're sore. <laughs> no, why should I be sore? Well, I'll have my secretary mail you one of my pictures. Be sure it's the one with some clothes on. I've seen the other. I couldn't help but hear, Jim. You shouldn't have said that. No, it's better that way. She's going up to where anything I can give her would be insignificant. She's got more important things to think about than a hotel clerk. Flash, the girl with the million dollar legs, Helen Rogers, who recently figured in the divorce of Martin Stoner, is on the job in Hollywood. It seems that good legs are a great help in climbing the ladder of picture fame. Apex is making tests of the new stock. How's the little affair of the heart progressing? It's not. Kind of a new experience for you, isn't it, Reynolds? Uh, this picture thing has gone to her head. I've called her, wired her, written her. What's the use? 
Had a kind of a good taste of high life already, hadn't she? That home in Beverly Hills, an imported car and all the rest of it. Yeah, what of it? Be kind of tough to come back to a job in a hotel, wouldn't it? What do you mean? What's on your mind? I was thinking about those tests. You know, sometimes they're not a success. And then? Oh, talk sense. How do we know if they're going to be a success or not? One might make sure that they would fail. Helen Rogers would be out like a last summer's hat. And she might be a little more approachable. I hear your friend Von Berg is going to direct the test. You know, a director can ruin any test if he wants to. Von Berg! Wait here, I'll be right back. Hello, Gertie. Get me Von Berg at the Apex Studio. Yeah. Booth number three, Mr. Reynolds. I've ever seen. Put some quiet! Did I have it? Right! Now be sure to be languid at the opening of the scene. And a knock on the door. Complete transition. You understand? Ever! Action! How will you do it? Just like I do it? I'll show you. Give me that. I am so lonely. I am so lonely. Where can it be? Here! Do it! Now, please, Miss Rogers, we will take it again. Remember, you are a daughter of wealth. You are well-born, brilliant, intelligent. That is, the script says so. He sure can dish out a line of top chatter without dropping a stitch, can he? I've been the prop man on every picture he's made. He ain't so bad for a foreigner. Although he ain't generally so tough on the actors. Hmm. Art your action. Lonely. Where can he be? Come in. Down. Oh, Count. My darling, I must leave you. Oh, what will I do? What will I do? Drop that! Is she getting any better, Vaughn? Better? In a hundred years she couldn't act. I know, Vaughn, I know, but we've got to make this one picture with the girl. I've got a lot of money out of exploitation. I'm a director, not an animal trainer. Vaughn, wait, please. I've got to get something on the film to show the public the girl who has the million dollar legs. Why don't you show her walking on her hands? Wait, look, Vaughn, I'll tell you what I'll do. You take a rest for the balance of the week, and I'll get the boys to write another story, an actor-proof story. The only story she could do is where they talk about her and she never shows up. Is she very bad? Well, if Vaughn gives her up, she's terrible. But I've got to make this one picture anyway. I'm stuck. You mean you won't make the other five? No, the contract said if the first one was good. Oh, Laura, I was awful. <laughs> Never mind, darling. That director wasn't so darn good himself. Helen, can I speak to you a minute? Oh, I want to go and talk to Joe. Well, I, I guess that's that. It wasn't so good, Helen. Why don't you give it up? And go back to the hotel? No, you don't have to do that. Can't you understand, Helen? Oh, Don, please. But, but, Helen. Here you are, Vaughn. I'll do as much for you someday. I tried to do it for you that time, Don. But I'm awfully ashamed of myself. Forget it. She's better off. 
Perhaps. I hope so. Hiya, Josie Rosie. Hi, Tootsie Wootsie. Say, you wouldn't think this was a second-hand car, would you? No, sir. I thought you made it yourself. What a cracker. What a cracker. Ah, uh, you're an old cookie yourself. Ah, uh, not so old. Ah, uh, old enough to know better. How old do you think I am, anyway? Oh, about 30. That's right. 30. How'd you guess it? Well, I've got a brother 15, and he's only half nuts. All right, all right. How about take a little ride with me tonight, huh? Okay. But get this. I don't drink, smoke, pet, or neck. Now, where do we go from here? Home. That's what I thought. I got a wire from Morgan, the great English writer. Listen. Your offer accepted. I'm flying to the coast at once. Morgan. He ought to be here today. But what makes you think this British ship can knock out a yarn that'll make this Rogers dame look good? Listen. He wrote a book called Mother-in-Law. And he made you love the old lady. And when a guy can do that, <laughs> he might be a help to us. I read he was in New York. Perhaps he'll uh, write us a good story. Why not? Good morning, sir. So it is. Thank you. Uh, will you register? Quite so. Now, what can I do for you, sir? I'd like accommodations. A suite. I'll be here for a while. Yes, sir. Show Mr. Morgan this suite. I'm sure you'll find it very comfortable, sir. Hey, I tell you, we ain't got a chance to miss with a writer like this fellow Morgan. Hello? Are you there? Sure I'm there. <laughs> no, I'm here. Look, we ain't got no time for games. Say, who is this? Arthur de Lacey Morgan. Mr. Morgan, I shall see you in the morning. Oh, yes. I'm to dash you off a bit of something. Good, goodbye, Mr. Morgan. Morgan will be over in the morning. Telegram for Mr. Morgan. For me? Sign here, please. Oh, Mr. Franklin, I opened this telegram by mistake. It's for the Britisher upstairs. I think I'd better go up and explain personally. All right. Thanks. Come in. Mr. Morgan, I'm very sorry. I opened this wire by mistake. Well, it's perfectly all right. You see, we have the same name. Interesting. It's of no importance. Well, I hope you'll enjoy the story. What studio are you going to work for? I'm with the uh, Apex. I'm to do a story for a Helen Rocha. Oh, how very interesting. Uh, perhaps you can uh, tell me about her, what sort of a girl she is. That'll help me. Oh, she's wonderful. She's it's quite, uh, but that isn't going to be much of a help. What sort of story are you going to write, Mr. Morgan? I haven't quite made up my mind. Something about a mythical kingdom with dukes and duchesses and princes and all that sort of thing. I don't think that'll suit Miss Rogers. No? Well, perhaps you might make a suggestion. I believe I could write a story for Helen Rogers. I'd start the story in a hotel. She'd be the stenographer. She'd be in love with a clerk in the hotel. He's not a bad sort. He has no money to speak of. Now, she has an idea that she wants position, money, fame. I'd have her sing. <laughs> oh, I say, old chap, it's in the suitcase. Huh? Suitcase? <laughs> you mean it's in the bag, in the bag. Oh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> what kind of a story are you going to write, Mr. Morgan? Well, I've been making some inquiries about this Miss Rogers of yours. I've decided to place her in an environment familiar to her. I'll start the story in a hotel. 
She's the hotel stenographer. She's in love with the hotel clerk. He's not a bad sort, but he has no money to speak of. <coughs> what did I tell you? Excuse me, Mr. Morgan, go on. Now she has ideas of uh, fame, wealth, position. That's it, Sam, that's it. Don't interrupt. I'll have her sing. But she can't sing. I'll find out if she can sing. Mr. Morgan, you've earned your memory already by calling our attention to it. Hello. Find out if Miss Rogers can sing or dance. Didn't I tell you not to worry? Didn't I tell you that a fellow who could make you love mother-in-laws must be smart? He's a genius. Sure he's a genius. Now I've got an idea. We'll copy the hotel lobby where Miss Rogers used to work. Well, how's that, huh? Now you're a genius. Mm, well, I should oh. say I am. <laughs> I can't like it around, Joe. You do? Well, I guess you'll be leaving pretty soon, won't you? Yeah, I kind of hate that, too. What do you mean, leaving? Well, a gal's a flap hole, a wet blanket. Is that so? Well, smart guy, she's going to make a picture somehow. It's in her contract. Say, you'd make a great little comic yourself. I'll teach you how to do some funny falls. Really, Joe? Sure. Watch this one. There you are. It's easy. Ship the body east, Joe, and tell him I died game. Hey, Barrymore! Chief, oh. you that furniture. The boss, kid, I gotta go to work. Coward, okay, leave me with my broken bow. Oh, oh, falling for the property man? He's teaching me to be funny. That's already been done. Oh. Hello, Mr. Adolf. Nice, friendly bunch. I guess good old Jim wouldn't be a bad tonic now. I want to try my test scene over again without that grinning Von Berg. He gives me the jitters. Okay, it's a swell idea. Hey, Joe, you yeah. play the count. You know all the lines. Sure. I only heard them about 50 times. It's my eyes way echoing, Cray. Now, I'm not going to tell you. Give the boys a hand the next pedal. Knock. I'll do the knocking. And you'll do it well. Hmm. Oh! Oh! Air scrape! Joe! 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 Oh, it'll be a pleasure. I'm going to be disappointed. Maybe we got a surprise for you. A new story by a great writer. All the way from England he comes. I'll make good, Mr. Blotz. I know I will. That's the spirit. It can be done. And don't you worry about that process over. I'll take care of him, that low life. Oh, thank you, Mr. Blot. Hmm. How are you coming on? Great. They send all the way to New York, and here you are, right under their noses, and writing a ripping good story. Funny place, Hollywood. Do you think it's a good story? Of course it is. It's human. I'm just a girl that's going to have things and do things. That's as far as he's written on the story. I think it's marvelous. Colossal. And to think he has done this in three days. How near is he to the finish? He has about uh, half the story worked out. Well, give him time. Maybe we can start the production without the finish. What do you say? I'm willing to cooperate since you're anxious to start the production. And now, what do you think of this new story? It's weird. The stenographer and the hotel clerk. I suppose it's the natural thing. I like it. Do you like it? Do you feel it? It's, it's cute.
curious. But it's like me. That will make a great picture, you and I. I have a great desire. Hear me in the bathtub. That was very good, very good. Except you called Mr. Crane Jim instead of Don. Did I? Yes, but it was so good. And the first scene, I think I'll change the name to Jim in the script. Oh, thank you. Jim seems to place it much more, more naturally. It's much easier for me to say. Well, that's good if it helps you. There's one little idea gone haywire. The girl is good. Yes. Let's go and have a drink and go into a conference. Sounds swell. All you have to do is let yourself go and slide right into it. No, Jim. This love in a cottage thing is out. It's no use, Jim. I just can't. But, Helen, cut. That's great. That's all for today, folks. Oh, gee, could you were swell. Here. You know, it's strange, but I feel like I were living my life over again. This picture reminds me of Jim hmm. and the things he used to say. Hey, listen, you two. I've been looking all over for you. Come on over on the set. To me, like your lady friend turned out to be an actress. Actress, nothing. That Morgan's a clever chap. He studied her and just given her a story where she could be herself. What I don't understand is Van Berg. He kind of crossed you up, eh? Too bad. But there are other girls. Not for me. Have you said anything to him? Haven't had a chance. Thought he might drop in here on his way home. Not bad, Hawkshaw. Look who's here. Hello, Von Berg. Are you double-crossing me? And if I am, what will you do about it? Will you tell Miss Rogers about our arrangement? Or do you want me to say something? Don't. You've still got your help, haven't you? Hello, Laura. Well, 
Pretty tough work, isn't it, Helen? Let me drive you home. Oh, thanks, Don. You don't mind, do you, Laura? Me? Oh, no. I brought my roller skates. <laughs> oh, Jim. Hello, Laura. Helen, it seems ages since I've seen you. You, you look beautiful. And say, are you putting it over? Thank you. I brought a package over from Morgan to Blatt. Thought maybe I could drive you home. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, but Don's driving me home. Well, good night. It's nice to have seen you looking so well. Thank you, Jim. Good night. Well, shall we go, Helen? me. Aren't you the well-known English writer, De Lacey Morgan? Quite so, but you have the advantage. Oh, let me introduce myself. I'm Don Reynolds, exploitation engineer. Uh, yes, Mr. Reynolds? I'd like to talk to you about doing some publicity booklets for us, travel logs. Oh, I say. Don't suppose you'll have much time until after you finish that picture for Apex. Uh, quite so. I suppose that I would travel the countries I'd be writing about. Oh, certainly. You'd have to be away now and then. What do you say we have a little snort? A what? <laughs> a spot of the best, I guess you'd call it. Let's toggle. I know a quaint spot right near your studio. I'd like to see it. Boy, I had two bucks yeah. right on his nose. Hey, oh, now, wait, 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 wait a minute. Right. Wait, listen, I had five oh, bucks. Yes, oh, yes, you had five. Scram, 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 scram. Let's eat up this wall a little, Wally. Wouldn't you like to have million dollar legs? I was a bigger actress than she'll ever be. Now you're working for five dollars a day. And to earn that, I have to keep in with the stars. Well, I suppose I must go congratulate Miss Rogers. Oh, my dear Miss Rogers, I must tell you how marvelous your work is. So polished and such poise. Thank you very much. And that's a lot of baloney. She doesn't mean a word of it. You're getting an education, Tub. On the set, please. Coming. We rehearse this, please. Pardon me, can you tell me on which stage Miss Rogers is working? Yeah, it's over there on stage two. Thanks. Watch your action. Come in. Forgive me, my dear, but I had to see you. Little thing I saw today, thought you might like it, dear. Hello, Laura. Jim, how's the hotel getting along without you? How did you get off? I'm on the night shift now. Hmm. Can't keep away, can you? Oh, you mean Helen? I didn't come to see her. I'm looking for Mr. Morgan. There's a lot of important looking mail at the hotel for him. He hasn't been around for the last two days. Well, his lordship doesn't associate with the help. You might try Napoleon over there. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Pardon me. Can you tell me where I can find Mr. Morgan? By the writing department. What is that one up there? What's carelessness? Who is attending that lamp? I'm so sorry, Miss Rogers. That was inexcusable. I'm all right now. Perhaps we'd better call off work for today. Oh, no, Mr. Von Berg. I'll be ready in just a minute. Well, we'll be ready in a few minutes. Thank you, Jim. Well, that's all right. 
Oh, Jim, uh, why don't you run over to my house tonight? You haven't seen my new home in Beverly Hills. Oh, I'd like to, Helen. I'm really awfully busy now, though. Sometime soon, maybe? You see, I'm working on the desk at night now. Oh, I see. The set is ready, Miss Rogers. I'll be ready in a minute. I'm looking for Mr. Morgan. So long, Helen. Well, his lordship is beautifully plastered and on his way to Tijuana, Mexico. You mean Morgan? Yep. Arthur de Lacey Morgan, the eminent English author. And now Apex can whistle for the rest of their story. They can't stop you, can they, Reynolds? Well, I usually get what I go after. Until tomorrow, then. Cut! That's all for tonight, folks. Nine o'clock in the morning. You don't work tomorrow, Miss Rogers. Oh, good night. Good night. Gosh, I'm tired. You'll feel better after a warm bath and a nice dinner. Nice dinner, lamb chops and spinach, and for a change, spinach and lamb chops. I'd like to eat a square meal once again. Well, you have to keep the girlish figure, darling. Oh, I know it. For you, you're positively beginning to bulge. Hmm. Just as long as I bulge in the right places, dearie. <laughs> Come on. Till you're too tired to care, and then they work you some more. It's what you ask for, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. Yes, it is, too. I'm going to have everything I want. Everything? Yes, everything. Oh, candy. Ah, uh -huh. remember your diet. No sweets. <laughs> How is the spaghetti and chicken livers? Well, your lamb chops and pineapple look good. And spinach. <laughs> well, what now? Oh, I was just wondering why Jim doesn't come around. Hmm. I thought you wanted to get rid of that old crowd. Well, let's go to bed. It's only 9.30 and I don't work tomorrow. We can sleep late. Huh. Now I'll tell one. Don't forget your massage. Then there's the hairdresser. Luncheon at the Advertising Men's Club. Tea at the Women's Guild. And that preview at night. Come along, dear. <laughs> They're exploiting you, dearie. Exploiting you. Mr. Chairman and gentlemen of the Southern California Advertising Club. I am very happy to be with you today. You Californians are so hospitable. Ouch! Say, I could kill you. See now, in your beautiful state, with its lovely climate, I'm dying by inches. The ad club will just love that speech. How can you expect me to learn the darn thing with you pounding me? It's all for art, pal. Ouch, say, if you want that foot, take it, but put me out of my misery. Now, how about a little steam? I'm steamed up right now. <laughs> Out! Say! Oh. Here's the manuscript Mr. Morgan sent in. He said to tell you he'd finish it tomorrow. And here's the afternoon paper. Mr. Morgan is a smart fellow, Miss Buxbaum. I'm going out to lunch now. All right. So, he's in jail in Mexico? And he's here in town writing a story. Did you ring, sir? Yes. Read that. Well, how can a man be in two places at the same time? In two voids, I'll tell you. Impossible. Well, I'll have someone find out. You will not. When things like this happen, I do it myself. Yes, sir, I do it myself. Not in my hat, Mr. Block. In my hat, Miss Buxbaum. Avenue in person. Kid, you look great. Another masseuse? 
I'm okay. You ought to try a few treatments yourself. Me? I should say not. My Joe likes curves. Your Joe? Mm -hmm. When is it going to be? As soon as the picture's finished. You mean you're really going to get married? Sure. Joe's going to get a little place in the valley. I'll keep house and learn to cook. I'll make a home for him. It sounds great, but what you gonna do if he loses his job or gets sick? Then I'll nurse him. I'll get out and work for him. What in thunder is a wife for? Say, you're about due to dazzle the ad club guys. Have you learned your speech? Oh, that. I threw it out. Sure. Sing him a line of stuff like you used to get the customers at the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Sit down. Now maybe I'll learn something. Who's writing the story? Well, I am Mr. Morgan. First, you sell me the idea I shall hire this Helen Rogers. And then, you write me a story for her. Well, you see, Mr. Blatt, when I met Mr. Morgan, he told me of the story he was going to write. Hooey! Well, it didn't seem to fit her, and I wanted her to make good. That's what she wanted, success and money, you know. Well, I've been trying to be a writer for a long time, and I had the idea and told him about it. He thought it was good. Mm, so, <laughs> he let you write the story for him, the low life. Oh, I didn't mind. It was my opportunity. Well, it is a good story, my boy. Tell me. Has it got a happy ending? I hope so. Yes, yes it is. Fine. Carl Blotz don't want to see anybody sad. He wants to see all the people come out of the theater happy. There's too much misery. I like that, sir. You want to be a writer, huh? I'll tell you. When the picture is finished, come and see me, yes? That's swell, Mr. Blatt. I'll send over Zipper Mark. Zipper Mark! Remember, whatever salary he has, I'll cut it in half and divide it by two. Helen, I've got some great news for you. Merge my agency with the two best firms in New York. That's fine. Helen, I'm sitting on top of the world. And that must be very nice. I wanted you to be the first to know. I've been so busy lately, I haven't seen much of you. But I've been thinking a lot about you. Helen, we could be awfully happy together. Oh, Donna, I know you so well. You've always had everything you've wanted, haven't you? And now you think you want me. I can give you all the things I've always wanted to give you. You'll have an estate out here. A penthouse on Fifth Avenue, between pictures, we'll travel. I can give you everything now. Oh, we'd make a great team. Nothing could stop us. Marriage is sort of important in a girl's life. I can't give you my answer right now. Well, make it soon, and make it yes. It might be yes. Where are we going, Jim? You can have one guess. It's to the city hall. Cut. Very good. Print that one. <laughs> Beautiful work, dear. Tired, aren't you? Oh, very. Well, a good rest will put you right. Then we'll go places and do things. Helen, that was great. 
I've got a big surprise for you. I know you like the story. Well, I suppose we let Jim be the first to know. Oh, Mr. Reynolds, uh, Don and I are, are going to be married. Married? I congratulate you. Thanks. I hope you'll be very happy. Both of you. Come on up to Helen's tonight, Jim. Just gonna be a few of the old gang. Thanks, but I'm afraid I can't make it. Good night. Good luck. I feel very badly about Jim. Oh, puppy love. He'll get over it. We've got a great picture. I know it. Now you can relax until we start another. Another? I feel as if I never wanted to see a studio again. Sure, I know. I'm glad you feel that way. It's the artistic temperament. But wait till you see the preview. You know, in two years, she'll be the greatest star in picture. And all of a sudden, the stagehand pulls up the wrong curtain. And here's the hoopers standing there in their underwear. Oh, 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 oh boy, did the people howl. Oh, 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 oh. your card. <laughs> Where's Don? He stopped some cigarettes. Could be along in a minute. How about a cocktail? Thank you. Great. How about a cocktail? Hello, stranger. The same? Yeah. How are all the folks? Fine, Jerry. Say, you seem to be doing all right. Meant to stop in before. Yeah, I know how it is. Uh, Laura came in with that uh, Joe Black and told me all the dirt. That Reynolds guy that used to be after Helen was in last week, too. He and another fellow were trying to load up that English writer from the studio. When I got wise, I chased him out. What writer was that? I think his name was Morgan. Uh, Thanks, Jerry. I'll be seeing you more often. We made a great picture, you and I. And we'll make many more. If you play along with me, I'll make you the greatest star in pictures. You know, I used to think you didn't like me. Remember that awful test? You make me ashamed of myself. I try to make you look bad in that test, but now I'm crazy about you. But you know I'm engaged to Don. Why should you try to ruin my test? Don had me on the spot. He made me kill that test. He's no good. I think I understand. If I do, I don't want anything more to do with you. Oh, well, well, it's about time. Don! Yes, dear? What Mr. is it? Mr. Von Berg accuses you of forcing him to make my screen test. Helen, do you believe that? You can't deny it. You wanted Miss Rogers to fail because you were afraid of losing her. Why, you! Don, please. Helen, you don't belong in this atmosphere. Can't I persuade you to give it up? I think you can. I'm getting pretty fed up. I'll get my rat. Hello, Helen. Don, I want to talk to you. Sorry, Jim, I haven't time. Stick around and have a drink. A drink? I'm afraid I'd wind up in Tijuana. Say, just what do you mean by that? I mean that you got Morgan drunk from New Mexico and had him jailed, thinking you'd stop production. Say, I'm sick and tired of hearing this kind of stuff all day. Now, you get out of here. You're not in the street. Now, don't go high hat on me. If you can't see through the shallow, cheap, mean souls of these people, if you like their double-crossing, yesing, and two-timing, you probably belong. I want my friends to be human and genuine. I want people to like me for what I am, not for what I've got. Good night. That boy's crazy. Not half as crazy as I've been. Oh, nonsense. Come on, let's get out of here. I'm getting out, but not with you, and I'm not coming back. You cannot walk out on your career. Career? Bunk. What's that compared to your peace of mind? She's right. How many stars end up in the money? Most of them up selling soap. Von Berg tried to ruin her test when he didn't have a thing in the world against her. Yeah. Then Don Shanghai's Morgan, so I can't finish the story. Wait a minute, Helen. I'm with you, win or lose, wherever you go. But you can't quit pictures now. You owe for this house, your car, your clothes. Think of the bills. Why, oh, you can't quit now. Oh, yes, I can. My salary will take care of what I can't give back. I'll get out of here just as healthy and broke as when I came in, and that's all right with me. What about your friends? Friends? 
When the crowd thought I was a flop, they couldn't even see me. Now they think I'm a success. They're falling all over themselves to be nice. But where are you going? Back where I belong, if I can make it. Come in. Well, what do you want? Daddy. Birdie. Oh. oh. I'm so lonely, Daddy. Lonely? What do you think I've been? You know, I was thinking tonight, sweetheart, with all the money and things we have, if we didn't have each other, we'd have nothing. <laughs> Helen, what on earth? Where's Mr. Franklin? Oh, he's gone to bed hours ago. What's the matter? I want my job back. Helen, will you marry me? If you still want me. Will you wash my shirts? Sure. Do the cooking? Uh-huh. Scrub the floors? Yes, Jim. We won't have much of a honeymoon. Why? Oh, I didn't mean that. I report to Apex next week to start a five-year contract. What are you talking about? The elusive Miss Rogers. <laughs>